So welcome to the last part of the Ayurvedic daily routine series. Um, so this is just talking about the morning routine and I'll do some more videos on the night routine later. So the last part of the routine uh, that I wanted to speak about was the part of bathing and having breakfast. So once you've done some sort of exercise in the morning to let your body sweat a bit, um, it's important to take a shower afterwards or bathe in some way, take a bath. Um, not just generally for the cleanliness feeling, but having water over your body is um, really cleanses your energy field. So it's really good to do this uh, in the morning to begin your day in like a fresh mindset. Um, you can also perform Abhyanga in the morning if you have time, which is Ayurvedic um, self-massage, which is another topic I can talk about that I won't have space in this video. Um, so after you've bathed and got ready for the day, it's time for breakfast, obviously. And I think when it comes to eating, there's loads of questions of, should I eat? What if I'm not hungry? You know, some people miss breakfast. What does it do to my metabolism? Um, so in Ayurveda, according to your constitution, is whether or not you should have breakfast. So the only constitution where it's okay to skip breakfast, um, eating breakfast, is the Catholic constitution. And this is because their metabolism is very slow, um, naturally, and their digestion is slightly, um, their digestion is not as strong as the other constitutions. So in the morning when they eat, it's their digestion is not going to be strong enough um, to cope with it. And you'll find that actually some of them aren't even hungry. So if they're eating out of habitual patterns and not actually getting hungry, it's probably not good because it's creating armour. So undigested food, because the digestion is not strong enough, creates armour. So Catholic constitutions don't need to have breakfast. Um, if they are hungry in the morning, some stewed fruit with some cinnamon and cloves is something like that is okay for them. Um, Vata and Pitta constitutions, it's important that they do have a breakfast. Now, I'm not going to go into what they should have. There is one recipe that's really good that I recommend to everybody um, and it's the coconut rice recipe. So you can find that in um, the Plants Are Magic magazine article that I wrote and it's also on my blog. Um, if, you're, if you need to find out where the blog is you can contact me. Um, so the coconut rice recipe is basically coconut drink, not coconut milk, but coconut drink boiled up with rice and water with added cardamom, um, clove, salt and ghee. And this is a really nourishing warm dish to have in the morning. It doesn't take long to make. Um, some people think that, oh god, I haven't got time to make rice in the morning, but it's like the same time, about 10 to 15 minutes. As much time as it takes to pour some rice, which isn't that long. And you don't need to do anything with it, you just bang everything into a pan and leave it basically on a slow heat. So one thing I would say about what to have for breakfast is obviously you, know, you can have a range of things, whatever you decide, but generally avoid cold and dry foods. Now this kind of goes against all of the granola, dry oats, yogurts, uh, cold fruit, mixed fruits, um, yeah, dry things, cereals, they can be quite dry as well and they're all eaten cold. So, I mean, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have these things, but what I will say is that they're going to be very dampening on your digestion and it's like putting something cold onto a fire. Like it's just, it doesn't keep it going that well, so you might not digest it as well. Um, so these are the things I would say to avoid. If your breakfast is cooked and warm, you're winning, really. Like, you know, you can have toast with butter, hot toast with butter or, or croissant, even warm croissant is okay. But if you're having cold and dry foods a lot, you may begin to notice that you can get out of balance from that. Okay. Um, one note I wanted to say about foods and breakfast time is that there is a lot in the um, sort of nutrition world about what to have for breakfast in terms of all these health things. 
So there's all like chia seeds and wheatgrass things and spirulinas and these crazy juices with like loads of ingredients in them. Um, raw turmeric as well, it's shoved in there as well, which by the way, you shouldn't have too much raw turmeric. Um, yeah, so all of these things, they're, you've got to be careful you're not turning into a consumer. Okay, your body doesn't have the ability to digest all of those things at the same time and sometimes they're not even that good for you. You think that the more nutrients you eat, like the more goodness you're getting, but actually you might be overburdening it. And a really simple diet is all the body needs. If it's warm cooked and not of many things, um, you'll find that your digestion health is much better and you don't need to follow these crazy um, consumerist patterns of these superfoods. Uh, so there can be a big debate about the superfood thing. I would say from an Ayurvedic perspective, and this is what I say to clients as well, is that you don't need to fall into this superfood frenzy and try to shove all these quite expensive things um, into your body and it, it just puts you off being healthy. You associate being healthy with buying expensive things and you don't actually need them. Um, you just you can easily do it with a simple diet and a really simple budget as well. You don't need to buy all these things. So just be careful like, yeah, we are really conscious of the environment and we want to make a difference. We you know want to eat healthier and look after ourselves, but you're still stuck in that um, allure of needing something outside of yourself in order to get that health. You know, the market still thinks you need to buy all these extra things in order to be healthy. Um, but what I love about Ayurveda is that it teaches you to realize that you yourself as a human body is really functioning and healthy with the most basic items and you don't need to buy all these things and keep your cupboard stocked up with all these ingredients all the time that are quite expensive and specialist as well. Doesn't mean you're getting one up on someone or you're healthier than this and yeah, so try not to fall into that trap too much, you don't need much at all. So that's the end of the series of the Ayurvedic routine and we, I will do one on the evening routine as well soon. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions or if you'd like if you're interested in having like a routine formulated for yourself, um, I'd be happy to do that. So please get in touch. Bye -bye.